Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mix Tank Live on Pure Mix. My name is Mark Abrams, and I'm here every other Monday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern reviewing mixes from what we like to call Mix Tank on Pure Mix. Mix Tank can be thought of like a live think tank for your mixes. So all of our community members chip in and, and give their feedback on stuff, and you can kind of put where the track is at in the comments and let everybody know what you're either struggling with or looking for advice on or so on and so forth and then you can contribute to other people's stuff as well it's awesome and we're going to dig in here in a minute uh hello to everybody in the chat thank you for tuning in and thank you for uh my regulars who uh seem to come back every other week and it's awesome to see you guys in the chat so thank you very much looking forward to hearing your stuff the way that we like to do it uh, with selection for the mixes is I like to hit everybody that's live in the YouTube chat. So if you're joining us on Facebook or Twitch or anywhere else, uh, hop over to YouTube if you have a song that you want me to review. Everybody in the YouTube chat, make sure you put your username and the song that you submitted, and I will try to get to them before the end of the stream. We're going to go till about four or a little bit after today, so looking forward to that. But before we get started, as always, I've got some housekeeping stuff. For the last two weeks, I've been teasing you guys with the Foo Fighters video from Daryl Thorpe. We've had some fun things with the new version of the website. We're, we're working some stuff out on video release stuff, and we've had a couple delays. But I thought I'd tease you one more time today. We're hoping to put this up on Friday. Uh, we'll, we'll keep you posted if it's going to be a little bit of a delay over in the Pure Mixers Facebook group. Make sure you're signed up for that if you're not already. But today, I'm going to tease you with a little bit of the trailer. Here we go. My name is Daryl Thorpe. I'm here to talk about the Foo Fighters covering the Bee Gees song, Tragedy. Tragedy. Clarity in guitars is one of the biggest things in a mix. When you make guitars bright without being harsh, that is a tough, tough road to travel down. 95% of the time, I'm really going in there and surgically, surgically doing vocal rides. I mean, I know it's a disco song, but it's also a rock band playing a disco song. Kind of want it to sound like a, a rock band playing a disco song. Yeah, because that's freaking awesome. Uh, so hopefully Friday, we'll keep you posted. Keep an eye on the Pure Mixes Facebook group, and that video is coming to you very soon. We've also had a lot of requests for mixing contests. We have some plans to get one going live soon. We're just, again, working out a couple little things on the back end of that, so stay tuned, and we'll announce a new mixing contest very shortly. Thanks for your patience. Without any further delay, let's jump into some Mix Tank. So here is Mix Tank. This is what it looks like if you are new here. Over on the left, I've got a bunch of cards with mixes that have been submitted. And I've got a timeline. On that timeline, I can drop time-stamped comments. I won't be doing that today since I'll be talking live about it. But uh, that's where that'll happen. If you'll see some of the other ones that will pull up here have comments on them, they're time-stamped. It'll say things like, bring the snare up here, or uh, wonderful input like that. Over on the right, you'll see that the song I have pulled up right now is from a user in the chat right now who his name is... Actually, I don't... I don't know if I, I lost it in the scroll. Anyway, it, the username is Gord. His level is passionate. It says that the track status is an advanced mix. The song is called Tales of Woe version 2. In the comments, he writes, worked on the suggested changes from previous submissions that he did, including slapback on female voices, less boxy bass, less compression on some tracks and more on other tracks. I'm experimenting with using the Pultec EQs more. Fun. I have all three on the master bus. Do it. 1A, the 3C, and the 5. That'd be like the MEQ5. Is that crazy? Thanks for your comments. It's not crazy. Let's check it out. All right. I'm going to hit my HG button, and let's listen. Here we go. This is Tales of Woe V2. Um. Just 
Awesome. I'm going to play the last hit one more time because I just heard something on there that I'm going to call attention to. So here we go. Okay, I'll just start with that. So um, what I was hearing is the piano is extraordinarily wide on that last hit. And there's some other stuff going on in the track that um, I think might have some some phase issues going on. But um I didn't notice that piano thing until the very end, so just overall on the track, but we'll we'll get to that in a second. So uh, first of all, great job. I love the song. Uh, great production, great playing. Everybody's awesome on there. Uh, really cool, Gord. And um, I'm hearing, uh, I think I'm hearing like some improvement from some other mixes that you've submitted in the past and everything. So that's really cool. This sounds great. And it's on a, on a really cool path. Um, okay, so... Let's talk about uh, some of the low end and the body of the track. So for me, I could use a little bit more, um, say, first of all, like punch from the kicks uh, being, you know, it's got like the four on the floor groove with the train beat going. And I'd like something to just kind of push the beat along and keep that groove kind of moving forward uh, throughout the whole track. So overall, I'm kind of missing some body and um, some bottom from the entire track. And I think that if we talk about your pull text on the master bus, that's something that can be achieved really well with the EQP 1A. Um, just looking for a frequency point on the bottom where you start to boost and you feel a connection between the, the kick and the bass, um, that's kind of looking at it from an overall like zoomed out point of view too. You might want to go into the actual tracks and see if there's something you can do to make those speak a little bit more. I'm not saying like add a ton of bass because I know, um, you know, even with the style, it's not like you're trying to make a hip hop record here, but um, you could probably find some more body and some more definition and just some, some low frequency stuff that'll allow those things to kind of have a little bit more heft and a little bit more confidence as they, you know, are pushing the track forward. So I'd look at that for the bass, for the kick, you know, and just see what you could do there. In the kit overall, it felt a little bit one-dimensional to me. And by that, I mean like kind of flat, not reaching too far back into the speaker, which again, isn't a big deal. That can be a stylistic choice. 
but I'm missing some of the mid range, like the low mid range punch on on those drums, and just it's feeling a little bit flat in the in that range. So there might be something like one thing that you can do for this that um, I love doing and, and was shown to me is take like a um, it can be any EQ. It doesn't have to be one of the ones I mentioned. But if you take like a if you have like a 1073 like a you know Waves UAD whatever. Look for, take the frequency points and boost them up and see as you like kind of have the gain up, when you move the frequency point around, is there something that makes that source speak a little bit better and have some three-dimensionality to it? You can get yourself into trouble because things can start to muddy up and all of that, but um, just looking for those frequency points that kind of make the instrument speak is a is a huge thing that like can go go really far so i'll do that with like a neve i'll do that with um like a api 550 style eq just kind of adding some gain and looking for frequency points that that kind of boost things up and that'll teach you a lot about the source so from there you can kind of further dial it in and be a little bit more specific about tailoring it you know if you do that with like a 550 or a 1073 um, and you don't necessarily like the bandwidth of those those particular EQs, you could then do something like go in with a you know more digital EQ like a Pro Q3 or something, and you know further shape it. But um, that's something that helps you discover your sources, and I think would would help make those drums speak a little bit better. The other thing with the drums was I was thinking um, I don't know how many mics are on it. It sounds like they're in mono. Um, not a not a ton of mics and everything. If you do have multiple mics, just make sure you're checking the phase on them. That's something that can make things feel very flat if you have cancellation going on, especially between like an overhead and a kick drum or a snare drum. So just make sure you're all all good on the phase um, between your microphones. Overall, it felt a little bit excessive in the 3K and up range. Uh, I hear it mostly in the guitar solo and the female voice. So those might be two sources to kind of look at that range on and just see, is this too pokey or you know is it uh, abrasive to the ear if you turn it up loud and just see um the the guitar especially that was on the left side felt like it was in front of the mix to me and um uh, more present than everything else uh i did like the tone of the guitar um and it did have that three-dimensionality to it um but it it's a little bit pokey compared to the other sources so you could either enhance the other guys or dial that guy back a little bit um, don't be afraid of the fader too. Volume can solve some of that as well. Not always EQ stuff, but yeah, overall it's sounding really, really great. My last comment was that the female lead vocal feels like it's leaning a little bit to the left of the stereo image. I summed down to mono to make sure I wasn't crazy. And, uh, when I, you know, came back to stereo, definitely kind of shifted over. So just check out for that. Um, again, can be a stylistic choice. Since she's singing most of the song, I'd like to hear her right up the center and right in front of me. Um, but yeah, great job, Gord. Uh, it's sounding, sounding awesome. So I'm going to leave my little stamp here. Uh, Mark was here, in case you're not in the chat. But I believe you are. And there you go. Awesome. All right. Going over to the chat. And let's see what else we got. We got Karen Bassett in the chat. Good to see you, Karen. Mike Conway. Isomatic. Mike Ornsby. Good to see you guys. Okay. Uh, let's go over to, actually, while we're here, I've got one that I see on the side that says, Apple of your eye, Mark, please review. I don't think that's part of the song title, so I'm going to go ahead and review this one. Oop. And let's see, so Apple of your eye, this is an advanced mix, uh, for Mark, mix taker agreement box isn't happening, P please review. You got it. Here we go. Join my ship at sea. 
There's a buzzing in my pocket, a message maybe, from a voice so far away. But as I see she looks at me, I feel just like a fool. When in Rome, I guess I should do as Romans do. The apple of your It's an attraction, satisfaction, it's got me beat. The apple of your eye, it entices me. The apple of your eye, there's no fighting it. The apple of your eye, oh, it feels so good I can't quit. The apple Man, who doesn't love that drum groove? That's an awesome pattern. Always happy when I hear it. Uh, very cool track, Black Rabbits. Great job. Um, thank you for submitting this. Very cool. And uh, I have a question just off the jump. Um, it sounds to me like this is either data compressed or it was transferred from another format that wasn't full bandwidth. So that could you know, be coming from like a cassette or you know, you're transferring it from a vinyl or something like that or God forbid ADATs. Who wants to go on a rant about ADATs? I'll spare everybody. Um, but yeah, it, it sounds like this isn't a full resolution kind of deal. Uh, missing a lot of the bottom. So similar to the last track that we just heard, um, a lot of my comments are, are kind of the same. So definitely check that out. But um, I'm feeling like I'm missing some of the bottom. Um, there's a lot of mid-range focus on the kick and the snare and not a lot of heft. Uh, bass, same thing, very mid-range focused. Uh, overall, though, this sounds like... It, if it is a transfer of some sort or coming from something else and there is a full bandwidth version of this, it sounds like it would be pretty amazing because I think the balance is great. Um, 
the vocal tone is really really great uh the the interplay between the instruments is really cool um there's just some things about you know missing missing the bottom of the track that are are throwing me off balance wise a little bit but it seems like it's it's pretty awesome uh the guitars feel very wide to me it feels like there's some stereo widening going on here um that's something i bring up on here quite a bit uh it's just stereo widening going too far with it and causing the track to feel phasey and when i say phasey to try and you know put some words to that um it just feels like you're kind of swimming around uh things kind of get thinner because there's comb filtering things happening and um it's existing like six feet outside of the speakers which who doesn't want that but uh when you go too far with it it becomes you know distracting from the core of the song and what's happening inside of it so i would just check out some of that um let me know. I'm watching the chat to see if this was um, transferred from something. Six of One says, wonder if he mixed on earbuds. So that'd be a great question. Um, if uh, you're not hearing that frequency range fully, that would totally throw you off. And uh, guys, also, let me encourage you to please do post your chats in the live chat. As you can see, that's coming up in, in the screen up here. Um, so yeah, this is, a, as we said, a collective. So everybody chime in and let's, let's all review here. This is fun when we all do it. So um, yeah, so I just, I'd watch out with that. The other thing was, I felt like there was a lot of snare bottom. 4K was very present on that snare, causing it to kind of poke out of the speakers in a, um, in a abrasive way. Uh, so it's like sitting in front of the lead vocal a little bit and kind of pokey. But again, I think like the balance is there, the song is there, the arrangement's all there. Um, and I think that you're like finding the cool things in the mix. Uh, so I hope that that helps. I'll leave my little stamp here. Was here. There we go. All right. And did it go up? Come on, comment. Send. All right, awesome. Let's go to their next song here. And I saw some, we got one from Studio Jaman and one from Aku Fen. Uh, Aku says, I have to refresh. So Aku Fen, I'm gonna hit yours first. That's my login right there. Same password I use for everything. So if you guys can hack that, you get, get all the access. I kid, I kid. Let's see, I got booted out of Pure Mix my my pink slip let's see here let me try to log in again let's go back to puremix.com all right so i'm going to go up to mix tank and let's search for akifen there we go all right this is a cover of come together from the beatles and i'm going to bring my level down a little bit from you guys here we go.
Well, that was fun. Awesome, man. This is cool. Uh, I want to talk about this section right here. There's a moment that happens that I think is super cool. Here we go, everybody. Yeah, so the uh, that ascending riff, the bum 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 bum, um, that feels like you could make a moment out of that with automation and just like push up the faders on the guitars a little bit to really accentuate that happening, and then come back into the. Um, you could come back together, eh? Eh? for the chorus uh, leading out of the thing. Um, okay, so general comments. That's freaking fun. I love that song, and always love hearing a good cover of it. So very cool. Um, okay, so the first thing that jumped out to me was the upper, like, upper mids of the vocal, the 2K, 3K. It's very, very pokey. There's some resonance going on there. And a um, couple ways to handle this. So one, grab an EQ, sharp Q, uh, sharp bandwidth, so very notchy, and just pull some of that out. Um, another way is a plugin called Soothe, but I think that this... The amount of processing you would have to do with Soothe on this would start making it sound very um, very messy, if you would. So I think Soothe would have to go into that range where like it's doing too much and it sounds a little crazy comb filtery. Uh, so I would try just hitting it with an EQ first. Then I would try doing a dynamic EQ right at that band. And then I would either, um, you know, maybe put Soothe after that if you got to go further, uh, but being very... Uh, generous about like sharpening the range that Soothe is looking at if you use something like that. Um, but yeah, I would just, I'd take care of that first. Once you take care of that, I think a lot of other things in the track are going to um, come out to you uh, for enhancement. So I think that uh, if you had that vocal in the whole time you were mixing it, that would be showing you um, that the mix is very, very present and you wouldn't want to be pushing other things up because you'd be like, this is already kind of like on my ear. Um, so I would actually try muting the vocal too for these for these next things. So the mix, the drums as a whole feel a little bit boxy to me. Um, the snare has a lot of like 400-ish, like kind of just murky, um, murky mids, I would call them, like cloudy mids, right? And uh, you could solve this one of two ways. You could go in there and you could take some of that stuff out, or you could use something um, that's a fun additive EQ, like again, a 1073 or like a 550. And I would try adding some snap, like some, some top above it, you know, 4K, like getting above the, where the vocal resonance was, try adding some snap there, maybe adding a little bit of bottom, um, that'll kind of enhance the the lower note of the snare uh you know 220 ish something in that range will help bring up some of the transient in there um that's that's one thing that's really fun with eq too is when you start boosting up those fundamental frequencies and, and where that transient is things get a little bit faster too the transient is enhanced um there's a lot of ways that you can you can make something a lot more snappy just by using EQ. So I would check that out. Uh, I felt like that was the same story for the toms and uh, probably for the kick as well. The kick uh, sounds a lot like it would just coming raw off a microphone, and I would try doing a little bit more aggressive EQ with it, um, maybe doing more of a scoop thing to go with the style, uh, taking out some of those mids again and bringing up the bottom and, and the snap of the kick um, just to get some of that low mid stuff out of the way let the guitars live there let the vocals live there um, but make room for them by taking some of that out of the drums i think that'll help out a lot the overheads feel a little bit wider to me than the guitars uh which if you're doing like an lcr thing i would just want to make sure that the guitars are on top of them they might be and there might be something else that's confusing me about that um but yeah i think like a full range vocal would Oh, yeah. Uh, when you get to the full range vocal, so you have the distorted vocal in the beginning of it, then it goes to the full range vocal. Those felt like they could sit a little bit more into the track with me. And I would, um, for inspiration, I would go back to the original Come Together and listen to what they were doing on the vocal effects. Um, I think I remember it. I haven't heard that song in a while, but I think I remember there being like some slap delay and all that on there and uh, maybe some chamber and stuff. But um, I wouldn't go crazy on reverb, but I think that like some slap delay would be really fun for this. And it would give you a moment in the mixing process to pay homage to the original, um, just as they're doing with the cover, 
you could kind of give them a little wink and and try to like reference some of those original vocal fe- effects that would put the listener back in the same like realm of of where the Beatles thing was, but with this different take on it. Uh, the guitarist felt a little boxy as well. Like so, I just think that there's a lot of like you know um, a lot of low mid stuff, uh, a little bit above like you know 300 uh, whatever you know whatever frequency number you want to call out, the things feel a little bit boxy. So I just take a look, but I would do it on an individual track by track basis to see if um, you could accentuate some of the things around it. I'm not saying go for an ultra scoop mix, but it would be more in line with the style as well. Uh, yeah. And then other than that, just emphasize those big hits, put your hands on, uh, if you have a control service or if you have one of those like personas, one fader things, um, or if you use a mouse, I would just put your hands on the mix a little bit and do some automation to make parts like really jump forward. You know, when you get to the chorus, push the guitars up and, uh, you know, make sure you accentuate those drum fills and just give it some moments and, and a little bit of, uh, your personality into it to, to kind of automate in some more of those moments. I think that would be really fun. Um, overall though, very cool. And it says that you mix the song, but didn't record it. So that's always a fun thing. Um, I want to just pontificate for one more second about uh, going through with an EQ on on certain bands and seeing if you can find frequencies um, that make something speak. One thing that I'll do when I get a track that um, I'm just hearing it for the first time, like maybe I got the rough loaded up and I'm you know prepping my session and all that. I'm I'm thinking about all those things that that I love about the rough and that I want to enhance or whatever. Uh, but one of the first things I'll do when I go through the multi track is almost like a tracking phase where like I'll go through and I'll try to enhance, enhance different sources. Um, this is a technique that, uh, John Paterno turned me on to and it kind of changed things for me because it helps you to understand each source, um, on an individual level as you're going. So I'll go through each track and I'll look for things like what frequency would make this speak more or like what's getting murky in this sound. And let me just kind of take care of some of the problems and, and do, some creative EQ, uh, some like problem fixing. And I'll just go through every single one of those things. It helps me hear each individual part. And then I'll go back and I'll make my balance from there. I'll, you know, add my creative effects and then I'll start doing some creative automation. But there's um, a process that will work a lot of times uh, for when you get a track that you haven't heard before. So I recommend trying that out. Hopefully that helps. Doesn't work every time, but... 50% of the time, it works every time. Okay, so that's not my thing, but I think you're here in the chat, so we're all good. All right, I'm going to go to... I see you guys dropping mixes in there. If I haven't hit you yet, we'll get there. And I'm going to go... Oh, F Phantom. There you are. Okay, cool. So that's your track. Singer is 15 years old. I wouldn't have guessed that. That's amazing. That's awesome. He's doing very, very good for 15 very nice okay um thank you karen for laughing at my terrible joke <laughs> and let me go up let's do uh studio jaman next and i'll look and see who else we got in there so his song is called my brother takes flight and i'm not gonna lie every mix tank i look forward to hearing a, a track from from you so i'm glad you got one on here today thank you thanks for putting another one in. all right um so that's not you this is you okay revised early mix hopefully taking into consideration some of the uh, both the suggestions that were put up um i'll leave this up you guys can can read as we go but always fun to hear your track so enjoy
Oh man, that sound at the end was awesome. Right here. That thing sounds like it's folding over on itself. That's amazing. I just want to hear the first little bit one more time. So bear with me. Okay, awesome. Um, I'm going to totally uh, do a mulligan on this one because I agree with everything that Tom put on here already. So I would just be repeating repeating what he said. I think this is freaking awesome, though, and I love uh, how far you pushed all the sounds. It's amazing. Um, every time that you submit a mix, it's, a, it's always like this, um, I believe, Mike. Um, and, yeah, I always look forward to hearing your stuff. The you push things like past the point of comfort for sure. Super distorted, which I love. Um, the, uh, only things that, that ever really jump out to me, um, from like a objective technical standpoint and objective is even somewhat subjective. Um, the, uh, the phasiness of things sometimes. And we've talked before about how, um, you're going to be incredible in Atmos and it's going to be ridiculous when you're all set up and uh, you're working on a place and everything. Um, the, uh, there's a guitar part that happens that, you know, there's a lot of phasey stuff going on that's making it jump out of the speaker, but you're giving me an immersive mix on stereo, you know, speakers, which uh, it's not like the entire thing is wrapping around my head. You're just doing it to elements, which is very intentional and very cool. Um, the, uh, only thing, like when we get further into the song, some of those uh, ultra distorted drums, especially anything that's doing like the low pulse of the track, um, I'm losing the low end because of the distortion. Everything's coming up in the mids and, and all of that. And you might be able to do some sculpting to do some kind of, you know, clearing of, of some of that distorted stuff. Like again, like 400, I, um, saying that a lot today, but, uh, that stuff is, um, you know, all coming up with the distortion. You might want to follow with an EQ and see if you can get some more clarity by cleaning up some of that stuff. If it makes sense for the sound, uh, you clearly know what you're doing sound design, but I was thinking like, if you blended the clean sound back in, in parallel, you might get some of the low bottom back and the low punch, uh, from like the kick or whatever's keeping our, our pulse going on the bottom. Um, I really don't have a lot because I love it. I think you did great. Very cool. All right. Six of One says, oh my God, Atmos is happening. Can't wait. Me either. He's going to be awesome in, in Atmos. All right. Uh, let's see. So in the chat, I saw that we missed Anthony Difford. So I'm going to find Anthony Difford. I'm not sure if you had a mix or if you were saying I missed you when I was saying hello to everybody. I think it was when I was saying hello. Hello, Anthony Difford. I don't think you have a mix in there. Let me know in the chat if you do. Anybody else is in the chat that has a mix, please let me know. And we'll hit it. Mike Conway says he's enjoying the Abbey Road start to finish. That's awesome. Uh, new era of that is coming out in a couple of weeks as well. We're going to get that Daryl Thorpe video out there and then we're going to release uh, era two of the Beatles. So coming soon. Guys, my mom is in the chat. Hi, mom. Good to see you <laughs> in the chat. Uh, I have the best mom ever. Sorry, everybody. I win. And let's see what else we got here. I got that. One. Okay, here we go. The counter from Brandon. The counter. Here we go. All right, playing it from the top. Pulled up my collar, losing the fight against the cruel morning chill 
bell on the diner door announced my arrival and then remained silent and still. Climbed up on a stool, let out a sigh, set down the weight of the world for just a while. There at the counter, a fella beside me, he glanced up, but he didn't smile. I've been counting things for most of my life, minutes, dollars, and who's right or wrong. Now the clock is running down, and I can't see the score. Funny, all the things I've been counting. Don't count for much anymore. Steam curled from his mug. He spoke a few words, not directed at anyone there. He said, I don't know the question, let alone the answer. And if I did, would anyone care? Too many rounds had buckled his knees, life steadily counting him out. Looking for strength to rise up again, but not sure what his fight was about. Been counting things for most of my life, minutes, dollars, and who's right or wrong. Now the clock is running down, I can't see the score. Funny all the things I've been counting, don't count for much anymore. Sat there and I listened. I finished my coffee, gave him a nod and a smile. His eyes seemed to brighten just for a moment. I hoped it might last him a while. The waitress whispered about the tab he'd been running, unpaid for weeks in a row. I emptied my pockets for the man at the counter. The bell rang and I walked out the door. Been counting things for most of my life. Made its dollars and who's right or wrong. Now the clock is running down. I can't see the score. Funny, all the things I've been counting Don't count for much anymore Funny, all the things I've been counting Don't count for much anymore Awesome. Great job. Very cool. Um, couple, couple thoughts on it and, uh, overall really, really cool song. And, uh, six of one, otherwise known as Adrian in the chat, uh, said, love that guitar right off the bat. Yeah. Right off the bat. The guitar is effing great. I agree. Um, right off the bat, that acoustic, uh, the tone on it and everything sounds really, really cool. The uh, next element that enters in, I believe, is the lead vocal. And when that happened, um, it went from, like, I had a sonic impression of how things were going to go in the mix. And when the vocal comes in, it um, it shifted what my expectation was, um, mostly because the vocal sounds a little bit boxy. So some of the comments in the, in the chat were saying um, maybe a little bit more bottom on the vocal, uh, Justin Sankey's, um, says, would love to hear the vocal down one dB and 100 Hertz below up to two dB or up two dB. That'd be a little bit low for me, but, um, yeah, I agree that the low end coming up some and let's see. 
Justin says, mix feels overall a bit thin, but the clarity is awesome. I agree. Um, yeah, so the the vocal is the big thing to me on this one. It's it's a little bit boxy and it feels a little over compressed. A lot of times when vocals start feeling over compressed, that that thing kind of happens where like the the mids pop up. I'm gonna say 400 again. I don't know what it is. I'm hearing a lot of 400 today. Maybe my ears are just all 400. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it feels a little bit boxy, a little over compressed, and a bit loud. So. I don't know, um, you said over in the comments that this is a storyteller artist with bedroom recordings. The artist liked the mix, so I did a test master trying to retain the dynamic range. Just looking for general critique, uh, maybe low-end work and an edgy vocal, perhaps that could be better adjusted in mastering. Think as if I don't have the ability to return to the mix. Cool, I'll change my comments around. Trying to get into that workflow. Thanks for listening. Okay, if you do have the ability to go back into the mix, Always go back into the mix if you get to something in mastering and you're like, oh, I'm struggling. I can't get that vocal to feel right or sit right or um, things are too edgy or uh, maybe the low end needs work. You can address that stuff on the mix level so much easier than you can on the mastering level. If you start bringing up 100 hertz in you know, the drums or something like that and you've got a wide bell, however you're doing your mastering, you start boosting that stuff up, you're taking everything else in the track up with it. So um, that's gonna eventually eat headroom. There's so many things around that that um, I would just go back to the mix and address whatever you can right there so that you're starting with the best possible mix that you can when you get to mastering. If you're the same guy, that that makes more sense than than ever because you can just deal with it, you know? Um, I do understand why you like the idea of getting into that workflow. And I think when you get to the end of the mix, um, how do you know a mix is done, right? This is a uh, age old question. For me, it's when I have given my sp myself space from the mix, meaning like as long as the timeline allows it, I listen to it the next day, or if I can, two days later, and just try to separate myself from the mix, sit down to listen to it, um, listen to my speakers first before I hit play on the mix, you know, listen to something else, and while I'm doing email or whatever, just have music going, so I'm, you know, just hearing the room again, and then I'll put that mix on, and I'll shut the screen off, and I'll just listen. And when I have nothing that pulled me out of the record, um, no, like, clicks, pops, this thing's too loud, this thing's too quiet, oh, the bass is muddy, no thoughts like that, the mix is done, and then I, if I'm mastering it myself, then I can give it to myself to master and stay in that mastering world, because I told myself at one point, I have no notes, I am happy. Um, if you're wondering about things needing more work in the low end, or if the vocal is um, edgy or something like that, the mix isn't done yet, and just go back to it, because you know it's not done yet. Uh, so, Possibly obvious stuff, but um, just a perspective. Um, okay. <laughs> Six of one says 400K is only good in your 401K. That is true. I, I don't know, Adrian. 400K, 400K is pretty good outside of a 401K too. Are we still talking about the frequency? So, <laughs> okay. Um, so 400K, sorry, 400 Hertz. I keep saying 400K. There we go. Uh, Zoo asks, says 400K would require an 800,000 hertz sample rate. Tee hee hee, sounds of the future. Some marketing company is gonna, gonna give it to us, don't worry. Okay, um, <laughs> 400K, that's awesome. Okay, so uh, my other thoughts on it were um, things feel a little bit bright in individual elements again on the mix. Uh, this could also be a result of your master. Um, don't be afraid of a low pass filter. My favorite one is uh, from Dangerous Music, the Back CQ. That has, uh, to my ear, I love those the high pass filter and the low pass filter on that thing. And a good trick for high pass filter is have it on and bring it down a notch, bring it down a notch, and listen to the top end of the mix, like specifically the cymbals, right? And if you hear the tone of the hi hat or or something else that's living up there change in a way that you don't like it that's when you know you've gone too far. Dial it back a little bit again, remember where it was, then do the process over again and bring it down until you feel like it's a little too far, bring it back a little bit. You're gonna find a sweet spot for it. But that'll get rid of some of like the, the really shiny, like this kind of stuff. Um, that can be really distracting to your ears as you're listening through it. Things feel a little less pleasant and uh, you know it, it just kind of can be fatiguing. 
The other thing uh, I noticed is um, there's some performance things, I think, that are still happening in the mix. And this gets into a discussion of what's the mixer's role? Do we do things like performance editing or do we just mix the tracks that we've been given and not pay attention to it? Um, I've found that it's very rare that an artist will ever tell me, if you hear something wrong, don't touch it. You know, like there's cases. I recorded a band um called the yucks one time that was marketed as the worst band in the world and if i had tried to edit those drums those guys would have thrown me out of the studio from the second story so uh there's cases where you can't do it but um i heard some some groove groove things happening so around the fill at 120 um the band kind of fell apart a little bit and the fill's cool what everybody's playing is cool it's just there's some some things that get a little out of whack and since you're a pyramix member uh one thing i want to point you toward is jakir king's start to finish series there's a episode in that series where he's doing some some overall performance editing so he's doing the drums he's doing the guitars and everything and he's just he's taking chunks of the performance not like going in and slicing every single hit but he'll take like a bar and he'll shift a bar around, you know, just to make it feel a little bit more like it's in the pocket. Um, half bar, full bar, four bars, eight bars. doesn't matter, but um, not getting so granular with it that it's like you're trying to line up every little transient and make it like robots, but just uh, taking sections of it. It's like, oh, the guitar player was pushing for two bars there. Just slice that two bars, nudge it around a little bit, clean up the edit, and uh, things can feel like they're a little bit more in the pocket. This on this track, if I had gotten it to mix, I would have done, I would have probably spent like it probably would take a little while, like maybe an hour or two. Um, but I would, before even starting to, to try and get creative with the mix, I would get that pocket happening and the groove happening. That stuff will also um, affect how you treat the sounds and everything, too. If the groove is solid and you know it feels like there's a good backbeat and all that stuff, like you're going to treat all of those elements differently than if they're a little bit sloppy and you're trying to hide them. Um, so, okay, that's that end rant. Uh, the, the side stick on verse two, I was thinking that could deserve some separate processing as well. So you could end up like slicing the side stick, putting it on a new track and giving it a little different EQ, maybe let it, you know, have some more knock and, and boost some low mids in it. Um, maybe it's a different reverb, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, speaking of reverbs, watch your reverb times. Um, if you think of reverb, as another musical note that can really help to accentuate the groove of the song as well. So, for example, if somebody sings a line and your decay time on the reverb is, say, it's like four seconds or something, unless you're doing it creatively with intent and making that decision to have the reverb last forever, um, try finding a note value that, again, fits into the pocket of the song. So the singer stops singing, you hear a tail, you want that tail in there, that's totally cool, you have a long decay on it. But try to have it, you know, at least be on the way out or gone by the time he goes to the next line. So it feels like the reverb is breathing with the track and, and adding to the pulse of the song. Um, overall, it felt like it could use a little bit more more bottom to it. But I would I would go back to the mix and, and tweak some of those things, maybe on an individual level, add all of that. Uh, and specifically on the reverb comment, I heard it around two two minutes and forty seconds. So. I hope that that's useful. The uh, everything in there is cool. It's a great song, and um, I think you're on the way to something fun. So, cool. Thank you for submitting. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Six of One has a very good comment here. He says, "If the emotion outlasts the mess up, I'm censoring. Uh, my mom's here. You know, <laughs> um, leave it alone." Question mark? Yeah, totally. Just if. Uh, if a mess up feels good, obviously, then it's right. The whole thing is more about like moving with intention. If the players just couldn't stay in the groove in the pocket, then help them out. You know, if they did it for an intentional reason, all good. Leave it alone. All right. Uh, let's see. Really good comments in here today. I must have said 400K a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, Oh, uh, F Phantom asks, are the mix tanks dates planned or is it one hour before? Mix tank happens every other Monday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and on the weeks in between, I do a plug-in review show where we open up a plug-in and listen to it live instead of doing like a pre-recorded, you know, plug-in review thing. You guys are in the chat with me and yelling at me to tweak stuff or telling me it's in bypass, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, 
All right, let me see what else I got. I wrote some other mixes down. Here we go. I got Antriani, which was the one that I missed earlier. Let's hit that. Here we go. You are the one. Yeah. 
Awesome job, man. What a great song. Well written. Um, if I believe you're still in the chat. Let me know if you wrote this one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is Anthony Difford. Awesome. Very cool. Okay, so, yeah, great job, man. Um, Dreamy85, says Zuesk. Lots of fun stuff from the 80s, says Martin. Um, and Six of One says, maybe the symbols are a little loud in spots, uh, even for me. <laughs> okay, Rob Stokes says, sounds like the limiting is being pushed on the mix bus. Tiny bit of 2K on the vocal here and there from Six of One. Justin, sounds a bit squashed, which is causing the record to lack depth. Um, Zuesk, nice vibe. Uh, was the keyboard a little too pokey and present at the beginning? Felt a little funny against the very smooth vocal. Uh, bit of harshness, 2K, 5K. Six of One, bravo, man. Awesome. awesome. Anthony says, yeah, it's a co-write. So great job, man. Um, this is super cool. So... Uh, couple things overall. So the, the big one is um, I brought up Decibel at one point to take a peek at it. And huh, see what I did there? Peak level? Peak? No? I need a cricket sound effect. All right. Um, I brought up Decibel to kind of show where the dynamic range was sitting at. And uh, the reason that I went to that or even cared about it um, was... We start out in the beginning of the song, we've got keyboard, we've got vocal, the drums come in later, but nothing felt like it lifted up to me. So I didn't feel like the song exploded, especially like when we get to that powerful vocal performance on the on the chorus. I wanted everything to lift up and the excitement to be building and, and for it to be, you know, just overcoming, right? Um, but the level kind of stays the same uh, given all the, the kind of smashing that's happening. The other thing that happens when there's so much limiting like that is things, um, they tend to get brighter, especially if you're doing some sort of like clipping tricks um, and shaving off, you know, peaks and all that. Um, things can can definitely start getting bright and, and a little bit harsh. So I felt like <laughs> you picked a peak. Nice. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry. Yeah, I felt like when the vocal came in, uh, there was also some opportunity for you to ride the vocal. So some of this stuff might change if you remove some of the two bus processing that's happening on there. Um, take the limiter off and listen to what happens to the mix. Listen to how the balance changes and, and uh, things feel a lot different. Um, so I was going to say ride the vocal. Make sure we're hearing all of those words. Like in the beginning, I feel like the keyboard's eating the vocal a little bit. Um, especially on the first couple words entering into the song. I didn't hear what they were, but then the vocal got a little bit more clear as though it came up. Um, around 45 seconds, the first background vocals that came in, those felt really harsh and bright to me. Somebody said 2K, 5K. Um, yeah, somewhere in that range, I agree. Um, the, uh, there was a couple of little performance things. Uh, we were just talking about it, so I think my brain was looking for it. But at points, the drums have a laid back feel. He's dragging the backbeat. And uh, the keys felt like they were still on top of the beat, like they were pushing, um, not necessarily far ahead of the beat, just like they were quantized or something while the drums were like kind of pulling the, the backbeat a little bit. Um, overall, yeah, I think uh, my main comment is that it feels distorted and loud. On the arrangement thing, I would love to hear new elements come in. I'd love to hear things go away, come in, and, and really kind of give some more dynamic range to the song. I'm especially feeling that because of the limited dynamic range from um, the limiting and compression that's happening on it. Uh, but yeah, just making sure in the arrangement that there's enough elements that help you in the mix to actually build something up. Um, but overall, man, I think that this is like really really cool it's a great song singer's great um the sounds are cool you know you nailed the 80s vibe on it uh yeah i think i'd like to hear it without the extra limiting and compression and see if you were to take another stab at it um but yeah i mean if if this was like starting off as like a reference mix for you guys to listen to in the car and everything after production that would totally make sense for a for a mix mix i'd i'd maybe go back and and revisit some things and see where you could find things uh that'll help you make it speak a little bit more um really emphasizing the lyrics too right because you're in the, the chorus you're you're making this profound statement of you are the one um it needs to be massive but if we stay at the same level um they're not really the one. They're kind of the same as they were in the verse. So make them stick out. Cool. All right. Very nice job. Okay. 
Uh, you have a lyric comment in from Bradley Royds in the in the chat. A suggestion for it, so that's cool. All right, let me see who else we got here. We got about twenty minutes. Let's try and get to some more fun ones. Um, I'm scrolling up through the chat, guys. If I'm missing your song, sorry to make you do it, but please please feel free to repost the song and your username. Next one I got, I believe, is Take a Miracle. Uh, no, I'm sorry. What the World Needs Now. That was posted a little while ago. This is a Burt Bacharach cover. Here we go. Guys, before I start this, I want to call out uh, his his description here. He says, recorded this today as a tribute to the late, great Burt Bacharach. Uh, rest in peace, one of my heroes songwriting-wise. Wondering about a generally um, sibilance, low-end, what type of fine-tuning it would be uh, required to be ready for publishing. Thanks for your comments. Awesome. Looking forward to hearing this. Um, rest in peace, Burt Bacharach. Here we go. It's love, sweet love It's the only thing that there's just too little of What the world needs now Is love, sweet love No, not just for some, but for everyone Lord, we don't need another mountain there are mountains and hillsides enough to climb There are oceans and rivers enough to cross Enough to last till the end of time What the world needs now is love, sweet love It's the only thing that there's just too little of what the world needs now is love sweet love no not just for some but for everyone lord we don't need another meadow there are cornfields and wheat fields enough to grow there are sunbeams and moonbeams enough to shine Oh, listen, Lord, if you want to know What the world needs now is love, sweet love It's the only thing that there's just too little of what the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for some, oh, but just for every, Awesome, man. Great job. Thanks for submitting this. Very cool. Okay, let me go scroll down to the bottom of my comments here. All right. Awesome. So on uh, on this song overall, let's let's talk about this. Um, I agree with Sonic Science Lab's comment here that the guitar sounds a little bit small. Uh, that's a derivative of pretty flat and mid-rangey sound, which uh, with like too much of reverberation. I don't know what he means there. Too much reverb, I'm guessing. Or in contrast, the vocal is way bigger and closer. This creates disconnect between the parts and it's supposed to be performed by one person. So I agree with that whole paragraph there that um, the guitar and the vocal have very different sonic signatures, right? So the guitar, a lot of top end um, on it, a lot of pick noise happening to it, and uh, a little bit scooped, more upper mid-range. The, the vocal is very boomy. Um, 
somewhat bright too. There's a lot of mouth noise in there, but they don't quite sound like a guy playing a guitar and uh, singing at the same time sonically. So one thing I would do for this is go listen to other acoustic versions of the song. There, there must be some. Um, and listen to the guitar sound and then listen to like, find one that you really like, like if a great artist has done it and you know, like there's a good team behind it and it sounds good to you. Really all that matters is that it sounds good to you. But, um, if you find one that sounds good to you, listen to the tone of the guitar, listen to the vocal and listen to how they exist in the same world. Um, if not this song, some other song that would work too. Uh, the vocal feels over compressed to me. You can tell that because of some of the proximity effect, like you'll have the low end boom up. Um, and then the vocal will duck down when you get louder while you're singing and all that. So it feels like it's, it's a little bit over compressed. Uh, the tone of it sounds over compressed to me. Things get a little bit boxy when there's too much compression going on. Um, one other big thing that jumped out to me was the mouth clicks and the noises. Uh, that stuff breaks the fourth wall for me. So if you think of it like you're making a movie, um, directors, their job is to suspend disbelief, right? And that's exactly what we're trying to do with music too. We don't want to hear people that sound like they have like a grapefruit in their mouth or something like that. And it's just like lip smacking and all that, or like a really loud, like open mouth eater. If you think about like, if you've ever been to dinner with somebody that's just like chewing with their mouth open and like, it's just lots of mouth noise that I'll spare everybody from doing. But, uh, that is the kind of thing that we want to watch for. And I'm not saying you sound like that here. I'm saying that the compression is so, so much that, and the proximity effect of how you record it and everything is that it's really accentuating every little thing that your mouth is doing and um really it becomes distracting like i can't focus on the beautiful lyrics of the song beautiful tone of your voice all of that um because i'm hearing uh lip smacks and sounds like that in between so i would say in between the words go in edit that stuff out if you can't get rid of it through editing if there's things that are happening at the beginning of words which i heard in this track something like isotopes mouth d click uh is amazing on that one specifically, the default settings work almost every time. Uh, I have an automation set up in SoundFlow. I just hit a button and it processes the track and takes them all out. And I never get upset about artifacts or anything like that. So that's one to look at for it too. If you're in love with this performance, this recording, I would recommend checking that plugin out specifically. Uh, there's going to be plenty of other ones as well. So, you know, do your searching or whatever if you find something that matches better price wise or something like that. But I do know that that one works great. Uh, the other one is there's some notes in the vocal that are a little bit out of, uh, out of pitch. They're just a little under, a little over, and I would clean that stuff up, especially if you're going to push this off for publishing. Um, you want that thing to be ready to go. So, you know, if it's going to publishing, you're hoping for placements and everything, and it needs to be great, right? Like it needs to be good enough to use in whatever it's going to be used in and, uh, highest level to the lowest level and all that. So, I would just tighten up the pitch a little bit. As a reminder, everybody has um, Melodyne Basic or Melodyne Essentials in your Pyramix account. So you have Melodyne available to you. Go check that out. You just click on your account, I believe, and then My Plugins, and, and you can get your license for it there. I would just tighten it up. You know, you don't have to make it overly auto-tuned sounding. Just when you hear something that grabs your ear, just deal with that one little note. You don't have to go too far, and then move on. Um, the intonation on the guitars gets a little bit wonky. Uh, again, Melodyne can help you out with that. Just, I really noticed it at the end on the last chord. Uh, overall, I think it's okay. Don't do a thing where you like globally process all of the guitar chords to get their note into the right pitch or anything like that. Just look for spots and see if you can do anything about it. Uh, the other thing is watch for proximity effect when you're recording vocals. There's a great video on Pyramix from Fab DuPont, recording vocals, one microphone, uh, he goes through all of the pitfalls of recording with one mic, recording too close to the microphone, um, the problems that arise like big boomy notes over, you know, sibilance, like when there's way too much sibilance can be from proximity. Uh, and he shows a bunch of techniques on how to deal with some of that stuff to get a nice natural sounding vocal that you don't have to then go into and do a bunch of EQ to fix and dynamic EQ and cuts and fades and DSing and all of that stuff. So everybody go watch that video at like, I watch it, um, 
probably once a year, uh, just as a refresher, because it's so good. That one definitely changed things for me after I saw it. One of the first Pure Mix videos I saw, actually. But it's awesome. Uh, great song, though. I think it's it's on the way. He did a really compelling performance of it, and I, I think it does it justice. And I love your profile picture. This is amazing. Look at this, guys. This is like a, like a George Washington kind of thing that you have going on here. It's pretty awesome. I'm trying to zoom in on it, but I think we're going to move on. There we go. Awesome profile picture. Okay. Moving on. Let's see. We got Take a Miracle. Oops. Okay. I already did that one. I think Take a Miracle. That's Oh, here it is. Mike Conway. Got it. Okay, here we go. Mike, quick question. One, this is awesome. I'm sorry to interrupt, but let me know what your monitoring situation is in the comments, if you would. Nice. Love the sound design at the end. That's super cool. Mike, great song. This is awesome. It reminds me of um, the group that did the Sopranos theme song, uh, both in sound design, performance, vocal. It's awesome. I love it. 
I was a pretty big Sopranos fan. So, you know, not that this has anything to do with the Sopranos, but there you go. All right. Uh, Mike, see you later. You got to run and jump on a Zoom. Have a great Zoom. I, this is kind of like a Zoom, but it's very one, one way. So have fun on your Zoom. That'll be two ways. That'll be great. Okay. Uh, so a couple, couple things on this overall. And uh, one, I've got the same comments uh, as the last mix about compression. So the vocal, primarily the vocal, awesome, awesome voice. Um, we want him to be upfront, capturing everything uh, and and feeling feeling very compelling. So he's right now it's a bit flat because of over compression. One of the places there's a line where he's uh, the end of the line he's saying city. And you can hear the overcompression because as he he's dynamically going down on on his voice, he's getting quieter on that word. It's getting louder and it's coming out of the speaker. So the compressor is letting it go, and then it's finally coming forward. But the second he starts singing again, it smacks it, you know, right back down, and he's pushed back into the mix. So I talk a lot about depth on these, and uh, for everybody who's heard me, you know, go on and on about this before, um, I apologize. I'm going to do it again. So. When you're when you're kind of doing a mix, decide who needs to be where on the stage. Or uh, when I say stage, it doesn't necessarily have to be a musical stage. Like we're not always trying to make realistic sounding performance kind of things. But think about where the vocal should be. To me, in this case, he should be right up front and sitting right here. The guitars and everybody else should be back on this plane over here, right? Like sitting behind him. But right now, I feel like everybody is on the same plane or maybe like that lead vocal is a little bit recessed behind the rest of the music. So great. That's a cool concept. What makes something sit on a different plane? If you think about um, EQ balance of things that are close to you or far away from you, what happens when you get closer to somebody? I've got compressors all over this microphone, but if I get closer, my voice changes based on where I'm at. There's a uh, proximity effect involved. There's you know, more top end, all of that, versus if I back away from the microphone, there's less low end, but there's not a ton of like ultra top either. You're just hearing some mid-range stuff. So um, if you think about how things exist in the real world and how those things come closer to you, it's all the same inside of mixing too, right? I feel the same mid-range presence on every element of the mix um, from the drums to the vocal to the guitar. Everybody has the same mid-range treatment, which makes them all exist on the same distance plane. So if you think of that, we'll call it the Z plane, the depth of it. What could you do with some of the other instruments um, tonally? Compression has a lot to do with it. Um, if something is super compressed, it's going to sit here. And as in this case, when he gets quiet around a word, it's going to poke forward, right? But then as soon as that compressor comes, it's sending him back a little bit. And it's changing EQ and all of that too. That's also going to have an effect on the on the Z plane or the depth of that vocal. So when we say things are one dimensional, um, that's basically the way that I think about it is it all exists on a flat plane. And great mixes to me have this like push and pull, this depth, things sit behind other things to let the listener know like here's the feature of the vocal. He's stepping forward to play his note, to sing the line, whatever that happens to be. A great mix for um, checking out depth LP is the artist. Muddy Waters is the song. So that's LP. The song is Muddy Waters. And uh, there's so much depth in that mix. You'll hear it when you, when you listen to it, if you listen to it. Um, it just goes back like a football field. It's amazing. Not everything needs to be that deep. And certainly on a song like this, you wouldn't have that. But um, I do feel like things need to separate a little bit and let things be featured when they need to be featured. Outside of that, so compression EQ make things breathe a little bit more. Um, you can you can examine that. Let me know if you have a question about what any of that means. If I'm not explaining it well, uh, the other thing would be to use more automation. I feel like things are at a pretty static level throughout the mix. There's not a lot of like the vocals coming in, so I'm going to pull the wah guitar back. Um, things like that. Just bring get people down as you need to feature one instrument, push them back up. You know, if you need to establish tension. We've talked about this in the past too, where like on a Foo Fighters example, um, uh, Run by the Foo Fighters, mixed by Daryl Thorpe as well. Um, that vocal or that mix, the snare drum is in front of the vocal to my ear. Uh, and when he's screaming his head off, the snare drum's still here. It's like he can't be louder than the drums. Uh, and there's, there's an emotion that comes with that. So it's not always like the vocal needs to be sitting out here in front all the time, but use that 
as an emotion use it as a tool to to help communicate what the song is trying to do based on like where you're where you're setting it and when you start bringing in that kind of intentionality into things it gets really fun so now you're like painting on a canvas and everything so this feels like a little bit of a static mix i would use some more automation before doing that though i would if you got limiting going on on this thing um, maybe back it off a little bit let things breathe a little bit more and see where the mix is once you kind of peel back some of the layers of the onion of the mix bus um that's most of it. I think the production's amazing. I think that the mix is on a good path. Uh, I just think a little bit of tweaking will help kind of captivate and pull the listener in just a little bit more. But yeah, great job. Hope it's useful. Okay. Uh, let's see. Thank you for... Um, oh, nice. Cool. Mike, you pulled up LP. Cool. Um, thank you for submitting that, Mike. And thanks for, thanks for being here. I uh, really appreciate it. It's awesome. Okay. Let me see. Six of one. I just want to listen to it again, if I'm being honest. Yeah, man. And like you said earlier, uh, six of one, Adrian, um, you said, man, is it just me or is the pyramid stuff getting better? Like every week it's better. It's insane. You guys are killing it out there. It's very cool. All right. Let's see if uh, we can get to two more here. So I got time enough um, is the name of another song. So this is RM Stokes. Let's check it out. Guys, I'll tell you what tell you what I'm gonna do here. Um, I got about 15 minutes, so I'm gonna play. I'm gonna either spot check or play like half of them and try to get to a couple people. Uh, let me know if you've been waiting for me the whole time and I haven't gotten to you and you're super mad. Let me know in the chat and I'll try and get it before we go. Here we go. Agree, Adrian. Set your mind just to reason why. I know that everything's coming to me. And what don't come ain't due to why. Yeah. 
That was incredible. That was incredible. As you can see in the chat, everybody's freaking out. We all like this one. It's awesome. Um, very, very cool. Great job. I'm reading a comment. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. So Justin, uh, sorry, I'm butchering your name. Um, Sanxis. Sanxis. A uh, common issue I keep hearing in the vocal mixing in all of these records. Uh, really cool vibe, but I feel like the vocal on this could breathe more. Feels a bit out of place compared with the music. And let's see if there were any other comments. So Neil A says, I'm not feeling the low end as much as I'd expect. And then I had to scroll up for like another two pages before I find anything else as a suggestion because everybody loves this freaking song. Nice job. Um, that was a fun listen and it has a lot of that depth thing that I was just talking about. So it was a really good example of like feeling like you can see back into the mix, right? Like if you're listening on speakers, you can see all the way back into the mix and there's things that are close to me. There's things that are far to me. Um, I would agree. My only comment was on the vocal for the most part. I feel like, um, there's a lot of compression on some things. Your overall level is like, it's not like you're smashing the mix. It, it's not that. Um, but maybe on a, on a track by track basis, things are a little bit over compressed. They're feeling a little bit flat here and there. Very, very nitpicky. Um, the vocal, for example, feels a little bit over compressed in that it's not breathing. Like Justin said on here where it's not like, I don't feel close to it. Um, I feel like it's parked and it's static in one spot and that can be a thing. I mean, that can be a decision and all that. It was also missing compared to the guitars and the other instruments. I felt like it was missing just a little bit of, um, high mid bite on it, a little bit of presence, not maybe high mid bites, not the right word, but a little bit of presence on that vocal, either just opening up the top or a little bit more presence to, Bring it forward just a hair. It's sitting behind the guitars and everything, which could totally be a decision, but I definitely want to be honed in on the singer. Um, important words in the songs and everything. So yeah, great job on this. I, it's a really, really awesome mix. Um, the low end thing, I felt like the transients were a little soft in the bottom. That might've been what the person, um, what I think Neil meant by the bottom. Um, and that could be a compression thing. Maybe if you slow down the attack times, uh, that'll, that would clear up some of the stuff, but this is amazing. I think you did great work here. Um, check the comments up here cause they're all really good. So cool. Thank you for submitting. Let's see if we got anybody else here. Um, the guitar is way too dark and messes up the groove from TPRS. Uh, there you go. That's a great example of how something too bright or dark could mess up with the groove. Let's see if we got any other good comments there. Nice sounding voice, but too hidden. Agree. Um, I can't tell you how much I love this in those tiny pauses. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely agree. Very cool. Okay. Sanchez without the H. Gotcha. Yeah. Sound cool. Thank you. All right. He's cranking into 211. I think Adrian's listening to this one again while I'm talking. <laughs> uh Cool. Thank you, Rob. Thanks for submitting it. Very cool. Glenn Bakke, patience. Let's do it. Glenn. Bakke. There it is. All right. Let's check it out. Here we go.
Awesome. All right. Great job, man. Uh, that's cool. This is a, this is your self master for your new song. It's comprised of samples and digital instruments. So getting everything to fit with each other in a cohesive way was a little bit of an effort. Let me know what you think I could improve on. Awesome. It, it feels really cool. It's a fun listen. Um, great job. And man, that bass in the beginning, I was shaking things. It's pretty cool. Um, that said, that 808 could possibly be a little bit too hot. Um, 601 says, I would just high pass the whole thing and call it a day. There you go. It's that easy. Um, yeah, I think it could use a little bit of a high pass on the bottom. Um, this is one where the car test is probably going to be very important for you. Reason I say that, when you get to the B section, the bass is substantially quieter. Um, probably by design as well, but uh, that 808 just completely leaves us. And there's still a good balanced bass in there. It feels good, um, but it doesn't have that same impact as the beginning one. So I'm wondering if it was a creative decision or um, a monitoring issue where you're not hearing it. So you're just kind of cranking up the 808. It does feel really cool in here. So um, I'd say like, you know, just make sure you kind of try that one out on different systems and everything. Uh, watch for the difference between notes when you're doing a sign bass like this. It doesn't always um, come out at equal power, you know, based on the frequency that you're at. Obviously, this is the kind of thing that you want to check on headphones because an 808 bass is like a pure sine wave unless you're doing some distortion and everything to it. But um, if you're sitting in a in a mode in your room, then there's notes that you're not going to hear. They're just going to be quieter. So that's one of those things where like, you know, as you're mixing that bass, try rolling your chair back a couple feet and seeing if um, the volume is staying consistent and all that. Or make sure you put on headphones, do the car test, all of those things. Um, there's a, there's so much information on the internet about working with low end, but let me know if you have questions, any more questions about that. Um, another way you can do it too, uh, you're a PeerMix member, you have Decibel. Decibel has a frequency analyzer in it. Uh, that will give you a visual representation of some of those bass notes just jumping up like crazy volumes and, and other ones kind of disappearing and all that too. If you need a visual representation because you're not hearing the low end, for example. Um, the B end or the B section, the guitar could use a little bit more personality, maybe some 2K, maybe a little bit of distortion, harmonic saturation, something on there. Uh, it feels like a DI thing. I love tapped guitar. It was awesome. Uh, great part. I wouldn't go like crazy on it. When I say saturation, I'm not saying throw a rap pedal on it or a tube screamer or whatever. I'm just saying like a little bit of harmonic information. Sometimes I'll get that from, um, pushing like the 1073 plugin. You can crank up the line input on that, bring the fader down, and you'll get a little bit of um, just like harmonics popping out. Not to the point where it gets all fuzzy and everything for something like that, but uh, you might just look for some texture. Uh, I talked about the Magma tube channel uh, in a plugin show last week, and uh, that's a plugin that would do some of that. Or like the 610 from Universal Audio, Decapitator, and of course, Spice Rack. So Spice Rack is a plugin from Process Audio made by PureMix. You guys all have access to it because you're PureMix members. Um, watch the low mid muddiness between the guitar and the piano at the end. Uh, there were some notes that were doubling up on each other and some resonant frequencies that were just kind of popping out. So um, certain notes were just lighting up a little bit more than other ones. So I would just watch for any resonances inside of those two instruments. Um, Yes, <laughs> six of one, just say it. Spice Rack is perfect. That's awesome. Adrian, you're like my sidekick today. This is great. Awesome. Um, uh, Neil A says, vocal being used as an instrument, so it doesn't need to be so far forward. I Yeah, I thought that you were doing a great job on um, on the vocal treatment. I would agree with that. Like, It doesn't need to be super far forward because it's just an element, almost like a remix. Uh, the only other thing I had was the hi-hat. I felt like that could have some more personality too. And that could be a saturation thing as well, like try Spice Rack. Um, for sure, try Spice Rack because you can actually, with Spice Rack, you could shape that thing where you're just affecting certain frequencies. And I think a little bit of like high mid saturation on that hat would help it pop a little bit more and really accentuate the trap thing that you're trying to do. I hope that that helps. Um, thank you very much for submitting. And everybody, thank you so much for submitting uh, your mixes today. I got to get out of here, unfortunately, but uh, really appreciate everybody in the chat. This is a lot of fun. We had a good time today in the chat and everything. So, And the music's amazing as always. Uh, great to see like so many people returning every week and I'm looking forward to the next one. So, uh, guys, again, like Daryl Thorpe video, Foo Fighters coming soon. Watch the Pyramix of Space group. I'll keep you guys updated, uh, by the end of the week to let you know if that's going to drop on Friday or not. 
And we do have Era 2 from the Beatles series coming very soon. So keep an eye out. And I will see all of you guys next week for another episode of The Great Big Plugin Show. Thanks for watching. See you guys.